Welcome to another Ozarks Voices Oral History Interview, a project of Missouri State University Libraries and its Ozark Studies Institute initiative. I'm Craig Amison with the University Libraries, and today's date is Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020. Our special guest is Mr. Lane Morrill, and we are at his home in Kimberling City, Missouri. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here and to interview you today. Thank you, Craig. Yes, sir. Just for the record, can you start off by telling us uh, when and where you were born? Well, I was born in Springfield, Missouri, at the old St. John's Hospital on uh, North Main Street uh, in uh, June 2nd, 1939. 1939. So you are the great-grandson of Levi Morrill, also known as Uncle Ike. Correct. Who was the postmaster at Notch in Stone County, Missouri. Um, and Uncle Ike served as a postmaster there for 30 years, is that correct? Uh, yes, he established the post office and then he passed away in 1926. Okay, can you tell us, and I'm going to get back to your, your story too, um, can you tell us how he landed that job? We established the post office. And how did, how did that come about? I, I, I'm just they, curious they, to know. They, uh, they petitioned, and uh, the nearest post office was Galena. And so he, uh, the, he petitioned for the establishment of the post office. Okay. And... He was the he was the real life inspiration for the character Uncle Ike in Harold Bell Wright's novel Shepherd of the Hills. Correct. Correct. Um, how did their friendship develop? Well, it's my understanding that uh, uh, the uh, you mean the publishing of the Shepherd of the Hills, which was written by Harold Bell Wright. Right. Right. Wright came to the area just to as many people did in that time, just to see the area, because it was developing at that time. There was very little that existed. The uh, Marvel Cave uh, existed. People were coming in. The Missouri Pacific Railroad was coming in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, Levi had come here with uh, a friend of his from Lamar, Missouri, which was Truman S. Powell. Right. And they had previously been publishing the paper in uh, Lamar when uh, Truman and he came here. Okay. And uh, so he came first and then Truman came after he did. And how did um, his friendship with Harold um, Bell Wright develop? I mean... To my knowledge, uh, Wright was interested in what was happening, would come and sit around and listen to the people who accumulated around the post office mm -hmm. and uh, make notes and things of that type. Sure. Is it true that Levi served sort of as a guide to the area and its folklore for Harold Bell Wright? Well, to my knowledge, and again, he, was, he passed away in 1926. Mm -hmm. I wasn't born until 1939. Right. So uh, there, uh, this is all hearsay from my father and grandfather, mm -hmm. but that uh, he encouraged people to come to the Ozarks. He loved the Ozarks, and uh, needless to say, uh, the Shepherd of the Hills is what cause tourism to exist. I'm, go I'm going to follow up on that, as a matter of fact, uh, shortly. Um, tell us a little bit about your background, and um, because we want to sort of make that link between your great-grandfather down to you, so can you give us, can you fill in some of the blanks of, of that time? Well, you might say, starting in the, the uh, I guess the first picture that I've seen of me uh, relating to the Shepherd of the Hills was uh, I am shown in a uh, little romper suit sitting on my grandfather's lap uh, when they were a local group was watching the, film, the uh, Shepherd of the Hills movie that had been filmed in uh, was shown in the early 40s mm -hmm. where in the uh, the filming was done in California, uh, and the locals were uh, 
needless to say, not pleased with what was shown. There's quite, quite a great bit of discrepancy between the novel and that, between that film. Novel. And uh, that is the first time that I've seen a picture of me related to the Shepherd of the Hills portion. Uh, during growing up, my parents, uh, my grandparents operated the uh, gift shop and, and the, shown the old post office uh, to tourists. And uh, when I was old enough, I uh, probably 11 or 12, I started taking tours of people through the old post office in the home. Right. So, so that was a tourist attraction even when you were, when you were coming along. When I was growing up. Amazing. And uh, so uh, I've always been connected with what was happening. Uh, of course, knew uh, Miriam and Genevieve Lynch, who operated the uh, Marble Cave, mm -hmm. uh, knew the Powell family. Uh, and uh, so all of the players, you might say, mm -hmm. were people that uh, my family had been friends with for if not a lifetime, uh, a good long period of time. Right. And how did people come from from far distances um, to see to see the area and see the places? Well, I remember having seen her once. Uh, the uh, lady by the name of Pearl Spurlock operated taxi service out of Branson, and right. uh, she would take people by taxi uh, up. Old 65, which was to what is, was known as Reed Spring Junction, mm -hmm. and then bring them back down through the Shepherd of the Hills country, back to Branson. She did that because the highway, Dewey Bald, was so rough that it was much easier to come down over the ledges with her, with her car than it was to go up, as we would know it today, on Highway 76. Right, and so, and what was the post office one of the stops on the? That was one of the stops. Great. She made the stop at the uh, at the post office, then would go on to the cave, then to Old Matt's cabin, and then back down to to Branson in the late twenty eighties, thirties, forties, and and the late. Of course, that was when I remember having seen it. Sure. So were people coming from far distances to see? To see the area? To see the Shepherd of the Hills in its day. The public, the, the story was that that was the ideal book for the country mm -hmm. because it was of a Christian character. Mm -hmm. It involved a number of people and it was of a pleasant and something that you could, your grandmother could read or you could read to your daughter and neither would be insulted. Yes, or embarrassed. Yeah, it was, and it was um, an extremely popular novel, correct? Very much. Right. Um, so you so you grew up um, there as at a tourist attraction, basically. Um, what happened? I mean, you, you went to school. What, what else happened with you? Uh, well, various things. Uh, as uh, growing up, uh, one of the most interesting things, and this will, real, you know, various uh, factors come in. Some strange people from Chicago, by the name of Hershen, leased the uh, cave in the early 50s for marrying and Genevieve for 99 years at the outrageous price of $5,000 a year. <laughs> well, those of us who were natives, $5,000 was one heck, and I use the word heck, but much more than heck, of a lot of money in the Ozarks sure. in the early 50s. Sure. Uh, I remember attending a meeting of the little association that uh, the Powells, who owned Ferry Cave, uh, our family, uh, the Trimbles, who operated uh, the Shepherd of the Hills Farm, as they called it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the people who had built a little motel down next to the airport that the city of Branson owned, uh, they had uh, quarterly meetings. Uh, Walker Powell, 
uh, was talking about how it was going to be, things were going to be very poor in the tourist business because they had shown this movie on television of which movies were, television was brand new to the Ozarks and that. Sure. And uh, that uh, fellow by the name of Floyd Collins had been uh, pinned in a cave in Kentucky and he died there. Mm. And uh, so Walker's contention was that there would be few people coming to tour because no one would want to go in a cave. Mm -hmm. And this fellow from Chicago, who uh, was there part of the time, stood up and he says, Ha, oh, could a bod be damned, it's a publicity. <laughs> fellow's name was Hugo Hershey. He'd been a vacuum cleaner salesman in Chicago. Mm -hmm. There is nothing like today's Silver Dollar City. It's founded by a gentleman by the name of Hugo Hershey, whose sons and wife came to operate the business while he went back to Chicago in the wintertime and made money sufficiently for them to develop and begin what we know today as the major tourist, one of the major tourist attractions. Absolutely, yeah. No, no so, one could have imagined, I guess. You know. So I developed what I have in business since that time called the Hugo Theory. Good or bad, be damned, it's publicity. <laughs> Which is exactly what we saw happen in the Ozarks. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I guess to, to a certain degree, uh, that might have been true with the novel because some people might have thought that uh, Shepherd of the Hills played on stereotypes and so forth that weren't exactly accurate, but it wouldn't have mattered because it drew so much attention. And caused people to come to see the area. Yeah. And then you had Jim Owen uh, start his float business here. Mm -hmm. And one thing evolved on top of the net. Right. They just kept building and kept building. And, you know. When, I, when, for example, with things that I did uh, after I graduated from uh, high school at Reed Spring in 1957, of which there were 18 of us in the graduating class, I was in summer stock with the uh, summer stock theater mm -hmm. that was operated by Southern Illinois University mm -hmm. and uh, Central Missouri State in following years. Uh, you know, here's a... Uh, High school, or from Reed Spring, who uh, one summer immediately gets thrown in with a number of college students that are operating summer stock. How was that? Uh, I tell you, it was exciting for a hill boy. Yeah. Do you remember any of the productions? Or oh, we did a number of productions. Uh, one uh, was a uh, written by uh, a. Uh, they were at summer at uh, Central Missouri State, they had the old drum, uh, the story of uh, of a uh, one farmer versus another, and and a dog being killed, mm -hmm. and which was uh, in Johnson County, Missouri. Mm -hmm. Well, we took the uh, the uh, play at the at the summer stock and took it to Warrensburg and did it there on campus. I bet that was uh, interesting. That yes. was interesting. Yeah. But various things that evolved. For example, the two young boys that uh, we got from Branson to be in that play were the sons of the uh, president of the bank there, mm -hmm. Ben Parnell, who was one of the most, another one that so influenced me as far as business. Uh, one of them, the elder son has just retired as president of Drury College. Right. So these are the type of people that uh, I had the opportunity to become friends and, and work with for years. Yeah, people who really made an impact on they, the community. All of them. Sure, yeah. S speaking of impact, I understand that Levi's son, Oscar, would that have been your grandfather? That's my grandfather. Okay. Um, wrote a pamphlet in 1948 outlining the transformation of Stone County in the decades following the publication of Shepherd of the Hills. Is that correct? Correct. Can, yeah, can you was, talk a little bit about, about that? And, well, that was a little booklet that uh, Granddad was certainly no great author, 
but he had a fellow by the name of G.H. Pipes, Gerald Pipes, mm -hmm. uh, assisted him in doing that. Pipes had to have had, uh, had been in high school with my father, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as my father said, uh, Pipes would sit and and draw uh, and or write uh, little stories all during school, uh, and uh, some of them were were rather uh, interesting reports or rather interesting uh, uh, characters, uh, and uh, this was what promoted one of the things that promoted the Ozark. Interesting. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about the changes that your your grandfather might have uh, might have outlined in that in that pamphlet that occurred here? Um, the same kind of things what you were just talking about or? Well, uh, Granddad basically in the booklet uh, talked about how things were when they came here mm -hmm. and how he as a child or not as a child, he was a young man, would carry the mail from Notch to Galena. Mm -hmm. And uh, Marionville, which was the closest railroad. Uh, and uh, then from Notch, which, quote, was only five, uh, four square feet, uh, there were five other post offices to which mail was carried. Uh, and... Uh, one of the carriers, for example, was a young lady by the name of Fanny Bell Nickel. Mm -hmm. later, later was Nick. She married her daughter, uh, Sherry Hershen. Mm -hmm. Sherry uh, married Jack Hershen. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were, again, it's an evolution of an area. Yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, interrelationships and, and uh, crossover and so Back forth. Back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you think uh, Branson's popularity as a tourist destination now has its roots in the novel's acclaim? Well, there's no question about it. Yeah. The uh, Table Rock coming, which then made a new life for many of us, mm -hmm. or for the entire area. But it started out with the Shepherd of the Hills attracted people, and then from there the evolution has continued. Um, speaking of Table Rock and the Lake, was there, do you recall, resistance to that kind of development when it came through? Oh, certainly. There were some who uh, did not want to see the lake come in. Mm -hmm. They did not want the, uh, the farmland impacted, mm -hmm. the good land. After all, we were, uh, we were a rather poor county. Mm -hmm. And uh, the north end of Stone County, for example, Crane uh, was a well-to-do area. But uh, the south end of Stone County was, uh, was pretty poor and meager. Uh, today, uh, you will find, uh, I don't know that there is a stoplight in northern Stone County. Uh, today, I do not know how many stoplights there are in southern Stone County. Right, complete flip-flop. It's a total change. Yeah, yeah. And, and is, is due largely to the Table Rock development, which has its genesis back into the novel. Back to the novel, yeah. the growth. It's, it's hard to imagine a novel having that kind of impact on a small community anywhere else in America. I mean, I'm, it probably has happened, but to this degree, I can't imagine. I, I have had the opportunity as uh, growing up and becoming uh, involved and going on in real estate and other businesses to uh, see a lot of activity around uh, certainly uh, this hemisphere and others. And I know of not, a, not another community, mm -hmm. not another impact that has been made like Shepherd did here. Yes. And, and speaking of which, you, you, you go right into that. That's great. Uh, uh, your your um, career in real estate um, has certainly allowed you... Um, insights into the development of the area. Um, I'm yeah, sure, I'm, I'm sure I'm you've still, seen just, you know, I, 80 last year, uh, and, uh, still, uh, still, uh, leasing, selling and moving a little dirt. So, so you, you're continuing to see Absolutely. the development here, but uh, gosh, I bet it has changed. It just tremendously. People ask me about it and I say, well, 
we used to sell by the section uh, and uh, then by the uh, acreage, by the front foot on the lake frontage, by the front foot on the highway. Today we sell by the square foot and that's preferable. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm sure the, the lake property is um, sort of skews the average. It, uh, uh, we're doing the same thing now that we're doing in California. Uh, we're tearing down and uh, using the, uh, what has been a very nice location for uh, multi-million dollar properties mm -hmm. and or commercial development. How do you feel about that? It's good for the area. And, what, and we've gone through the evolution of where we're now coming back and having seen the tourists that came as children mm -hmm. retiring and coming back or their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren coming back to enjoy the area in a family-type mm -hmm. situation where we've gone through the buses and the blue hairs mm -hmm. uh, and uh, had the, uh, the name entertainers mm -hmm. where we're now having more and more families that are wanting to come and visit the big cedars and, and uh, play golf and, and enjoy themselves as a family unit, which is what it began. To that end, do you think that Johnny Morris has had an impact on that tra that transition? Well, it's sort of like uh, has uh, Walmart had a transition upon the local grocery store. Sure. The local grocery store no longer exists. Mm -hmm. Walmart, as of last Thursday, had a new awakening with the new uh, uh, supermarket kicked in to Seattle, mm -hmm. where all you do is walk in pick up what you want and walk out. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Morris took what had been the Jim Owen day of coming and tenting and floating and has made it, we will probably be with the golf edition. I would say next year we will be the pebble of the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And how is that? Because of the development of the, the golf impact. And is that a good thing? It, it is good, in my estimation. Yes, yeah. Because it is providing employment mm -hmm. for local people. And we're having to have uh, more and more coming in under the uh, H-2 visa era to be able to have employment mm -hmm. because we do not have enough employees to take care of what's there. Mm -hmm. You take, for example, uh, you know, I go around looking at other properties. Atlantis is, to me, the most outstanding resort I've seen in the world. 5,000 rooms, 6,500 employees, and they make you feel like the minute you walk in there, you are their best friend. Mm -hmm. They are excited to see you and to have you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big impact. Um... Well, that's interesting. You talked about people who had grown up coming here and then they come back. Have you witnessed people who came here uh, when they were children as tourists and have come back to live here or retire oh, here? Well, and, the, and they've come back, retired, and left, and now their children and grandchildren are coming back and living in their property. Our city administrator here in Kimberling City, for example, his father-in-law retired here. We sold him the property when he retired here 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good for the real estate business, isn't it? <laughs> it's good for any business. It's good for all business, huh? Right. It lifts all the boats. It right? does. Yeah. Um, let's see. You uh, want to get back to, to your great-grandfather, Levi. Levi. Um, Moral, you said was born in 1837 in Maine, is that correct? Portland, Maine. Portland, right. Maine. What can you tell us about his life uh, before he settled into the Ozarks, you know, the journey from he, Maine he, here? Been a, the, uh, the story through the family is that he was a printer by trade. Okay. And uh, he contended that uh, when uh, Horace Greeley said, go west, young man, go west, mm -hmm. that he was telling him the story. Mm -hmm. Now, again... 
that uh, that's what has been said within the family. Sure. I cannot collaborate it myself. Right. But uh, that is an example. He printed newspapers around, particularly in the Midwest, and ended up coming here in 1893 when he was ill. And uh, he was 56, had just married my uh, great-grandmother, who was 18. Uh, right. Uh, you know. And Quite a difference, yeah. They came to the Ozarks to live. That was he died the day after his 89th birthday. And her name was Jeannie, Jeannie. Dickerson, correct? Correct. Right. Um, and do you know how they met? I have no idea. Yeah, it was kind of interesting in that because... Uh, he was publishing the paper in Lamar, mm -hmm. Sarah, and uh, she was from Lamar. But I do not know how they met. I've read that his illness was asthma, but I'm not sure if that's correct. correct. Is that correct? That's what... That's what my grandfather said. And uh, what did he do? He settled on 160 acres, or homesteaded 160 acres, that had probably, as far as if you were looking for anything else outside of the cave being close by, uh, you know, so rough you could not farm it. Mm -hmm. But it had the only pine forest north of the White River at that time. He made a pillow out of pine needles, and that's what he slept on. And was that beneficial for his health? Apparently. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Going back to one, his native main heritage in the pines, but two, the, the pine needles. And we have today, which I've kept protected behind the old post office, 57 varieties of wild flowers, pines, and woodland that exists today in that location. And it's only, it's kept that way because I want to see it protected for future generations. Is that the little post office up here you're talking the about? The old right. post yeah, office. Yeah, right, right, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um, I've read that um, also that, and, and you mentioned um, Truman Powell uh, was was a friend and colleague of Levi Morrill. Do, do you know how they met? All I know is that uh, Truman had purchased the paper from Levi uh, when Levi came here. And then Truman followed him uh, two or three years later, if I recall. Okay, which paper was that? That the uh, the paper that Levi was publishing in Lamar. In Lamar, okay. And then Truman came here and established the paper. Okay. And uh, then Truman ended up uh, dying in. in uh, uh, I'm trying to. I don't remember what year it was. Okay. But he had sold the paper here. Okay. So they had some joint enterprises. They were very close personal friends. The families have been friends for, well, my entire lifetime. So that was the Stone County Oracle newspaper that they were... Correct. That here, right? That he established. That he established. Right. I'm not sure whether it was the Oracle or the Stone County Republican. Okay. Um, I believe it was Truman Powell also uh, who developed Fairy Cave, as, as he called it, and then, of course, changed in 1969 to Talking Rocks Cavern when Silver Dollar City... Purchased it. Is that correct? Um, was was Levi involved in the development of the cave at all? Do no, you know? No, not to, not, my knowledge. Not to your knowledge. Um, and that always brings up, and, and this is not directly related, but I always have to ask this question because it's such a legend. One of the most intriguing stories out of the area is the legend of the Yoakum Silver Dollars and the Yoakum Silver Mine. I was just wondering, do you think there's much truth to the existence of the coins and the mine. Is that just legend? Is it myth? Is it? I have never seen one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you ever hear about that from your oh, folks? I've, I've heard about it, but I've never seen one. Right. I don't know of anyone who has truly truth. ever seen one. Right, right. Um, it, it is quite a legend, and it's, it, 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 it's, it goes far it's beyond this area. Continuing legend. Yes. But show me one. <laughs> Well, the the uh, the Notch Post Office um, 
actually started in, in, in the front part of Levi and Jeannie's house, correct? Correct. That must have been a little bit inconvenient I at times. I would imagine it, that it was. <laughs> but uh, then, uh, of course, we are in the process of uh, restoring the old post office and uh, the uh, new roof has gone on. Ah. And uh, I have all of the artifacts. From Those the were going to be my questions. Yeah. Stored, great. And uh, we will be uh, replacing those. Great. I was going to ask you if you had any of the original artifacts. Yes, I have them all. Can you can you describe any of them, or is that no, a secret? No, or there's no secret. It's just uh, as described in the book. Uh -huh. A rough table, a box set on on top of it, and uh, that's it was simple. Very small building that they built next. I suppose they built it next to the house. Next, next to the house. Yeah. And uh, of course, it is on the National Register of Historic Places. Right. And uh, we are having the uh, the building uh, restored. Uh, in fact, the uh, I have not met him because uh, I had to. Uh, I was involved with a, uh, a little problem in that. Uh, I thought that I had uh, a uh, problem at the base of my spine, and it ended up to have been a spur at the base of my skull pressing on my spine. Oh my! And uh, so in November, uh, I had to go in for surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, things did not work well, and uh, the day after the surgery for the spine, of which I came out a paraplegic. Mm. Uh, my heart uh, gave a little problem and I had to have a uh, mm. pacemaker installed. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been in a uh, uh, hospital or a uh, facility up until uh, first of this month when I finally said, I'm going home regardless. Uh, you can stand in front of Harrods and Trafalgar Square and watch the world go by or you can sit here and look out and enjoy Table Rock. Yeah. And uh, so uh, that's, that's what's happened. But uh, That sort of puts you out of commission with, it, it, with the project, I suppose, being right uh, does. involved. I do not easily get around. Right. But uh, I'm rather persistent. Well, and, I, I, uh, that, that, that project started back in 2018, right with the Society of the Ozarki and Hillcrofters. Are they still correct. the ones involved with the restoration? They are, and I'm on their board. And uh, we are working diligently on a number of projects, right. not only historical, mm -hmm. but environmental. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, uh, to keep the Ozarks as it is, as it has been, was, mm -hmm. and will continue. Um, any, any projected date uh, for, the, for the completion of the um, restoration of the post office? No, we just started. The roof comes first. Okay. Yeah. Slow, that's a slow, tedious process. It takes time to do it. Right? I know. I know. But the, uh, the shingles that we're replacing it with are shingles that uh, were made, part of them were made by, uh, at Silver Dollar City. Ah! Uh, with a hand hewn. Uh, mall. Fabulous. So uh, the restoration will be complete. That's fabulous. And uh, I assume you're trying to go back as much as possible with the original materials that you can, right? Correct. That's fabulous.